Very cool. Barn Fine, 1989, Celine SSC <clears throat> in North Georgia. Original owner car, 70,000 miles. Time to talk about what you guys have been wanting to know about. That's right, the Barn Find, the SSC, the 1989, Celine. I can't hardly even believe it. I know some of you guys are like, how did he get that thing? Well, here's part of the story. I'm going to be talking about it with my good buddy Bob, but I also wanted to give you guys some details because some of it I didn't put in the video with him and I wanted to make sure you had them. What a lucky find. What an amazing thing. I'm still like, <sighs> can't believe it. And I come across this ad on Facebook Marketplace. It was an ad where the guy selling the car did a Google search, all right? An image search for a Celine SSC. There was like eight little pictures, right? Then he clipped it and did a screenshot and posted that one picture. That was all that was on the ad, the only picture. There was no real pictures of the car. So I thought, you know what? I really like these things. I've always wanted one. I'm always looking for cars. I'm always wanting to find that deal looking to say, could this be the one? I don't want to miss out. So I clicked on it. I was like, you know, if it's a scam, I'll just go through it anyways. We'll figure it out. And there was a little bit of description in there. Then I said, you know what? Let me message this guy. So I messaged him. I messaged him again. Finally heard back from him. He had somebody, you know, that was supposed to be coming in maybe from out of town or northeast somewhere, but they wanted him to hold it. And so he was like, nah, I'm not going to hold it. So I said, look, I can be there at the end of the day because he was at work. And he said, look, I get home at 6. I'm like, I'll be there at 5.59 waiting in your driveway. So I did. I showed up to Chatsworth, Georgia, which is about an hour and a half north of my home in Roswell, Georgia, just north of Atlanta. I got there with my good buddy Brandon, and we, we made the deal happen. And it was such an amazing experience because I couldn't believe the car was real. He did send me some pictures before I went up there, but I still was a little bit hesitant. And so I'm so glad that I went because to find that car in the condition that you're seeing in this video, I'm showing you some original barn find footage. Some of it I haven't shown anyone yet um, of us loading up the vehicle. And what was really amazing was all of the original paperwork, which I'm also gonna show you in this video. The, the title for the car, the, was the, in the original owner's name, which was the guy's grandfather that had passed away years ago. Um, the original Celine window stickers, the um, service records, the information I found on the car that is a John Bleakley Ford car. That's who it was ordered from. It was sold from John Bleakley Ford originally. It must have been a transfer to Chatsworth Ford because it was sold there in the early part of 1990. And what's even better than that was that these cars had an original owner's jacket just for the Celine SSEs. And of course, you know he had it. It's priceless. It's spotless. There is not a stain, not a rip, not a thread out of place. The jacket was in great condition. If you look in the video, you can actually see it when I open the passenger door as we're going up on the, ra on the uh, wrecker. It's right there sitting in the seat. I put it in there. This car is just such an amazing car. I'm so glad that so many people reached out to me on Facebook and Instagram and other places. I said, man, I got a story. You need to hear it. And so I actually want to go and I want to read some of these to you guys right here, right now. Tony Welch said, lots of us try to buy it over the years, but not luck. Congratulations. David Mathis, dream car. I took a few pics of this thing at the guy's house one day when I stopped in. Matt Summerfield. Definitely. 2500 look at the driver's side window. Why can't I ever find a deal like this? Laugh out loud. Congrats on the find. Cody Fars. 2500 Question mark like 80 times. No way, bro. Did you really? Wow. Says Mike Clay. Delbert Clark. Oh my. OMG, this might be the best barn find ever. Congrats, brother. What'd you get it for? Mark Richards said, beautiful car. No way it was 2500 Sorry. And a little life face emoji. Charles Weber, best barn find ever. John Hardy, we got three explodey head emojis. Jacob Harris, 2500 
emoji. Dave J says, they're still out there, boys. Jay Scarpone says, no way. Tim Young, can't wait to hear the story. Well, Tim, you're hearing it. And we are talking about the legend of Highway 411, the barn rescue that I got last October in Chatsworth, Georgia. So, Bob, how you doing? I'm good, man. Thanks for having me here. No, I, I appreciate you coming down. He drove a few hours to be here, and uh, this has just been a great experience, getting to know Bob a little bit. And I tell you guys when I say, and you probably already know this, hopefully you follow him on Pierce Motorsports, but he is just an absolute resource for anything really Celine related or Fox Body in general. So thanks for being here and so much that you do for the community and the hobby. So you're calling me a nerd, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Fox Burton nerd, numero uno, right? Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, that's true. That's you true. know, so the reason I got Fox, I mean, I got uh, Bob on the video about this car is because we started communicating about this car once he realized who got the car. And I said, man, you got not just the knowledge, but he didn't live that far from where the car was. And he's got some interesting information that I don't and I didn't have. So I wanted him to be on part of this. So we're going to start with the backstory of this car, and then we'll get into what I paid and how I got it and all the things that you guys have really been asking about. So, Bob, give us some of that background, man. We want to know the legend of Highway 411. Well, for me, I, I had... Uh my best friend in college lived um, not far from the car. As a matter of fact, uh, those are familiar with the area, Mathis Mustang Performance, MMP, uh, in the area, anytime he had to take that route to go to visit Mathis Mustang, he would go by this car. Um, and I met him in about 97, that's when we connected in college, and that's when I was introduced to this car. We were driving down to Mathis Mustang, wow. cruising from his house. I probably went to do you know baseball cards or something like that and then ended up uh, getting in the car going down to Mathis Mustang, look for parts, because he always have used parts and yeah. you know, it's a junkyard. So we drive by and I'm like, whoa, what's that? What is that? What is that right there? And he's like, oh that's the that's an SSC. That's a locally owned that guy bought that car. And it's sitting out in front, no garage or anything. It's just sitting out the front of the front yard. Was the garage even built at that point? Yeah, it was okay. in the back. I mean, it was just a little... Garage slash barn, whatever. Yeah, There's no was, door. No, and, it, and I mean, it really is like a small barn, and I think it was more like they kept it, you know, the little tractor stuff. It was, they had, yeah. you know, it was a, a fairly decent-sized property. Yeah, a little, yeah. So, but, yeah, it sat out front, and I was like, man, what is what is that there? And then, at the time, too, I was still learning about a lot of what Selena had to offer, the SA-10, and some of the details, but this car was local to that area uh, from day one. It sure was. And I, every time I went down Highway 411, it was there. Uh, up until just a few years ago, then it had disappeared and moved. They had to put it back in the barn. So. Yeah. And that's what I heard from multiple people that, you know, some of you guys have reached out to me on Facebook. And mm -hmm. so they're like, hey, you know, that car that got the, the lady backed it up into the barn because so many people came by and what they do? They tried to buy it. I know of, I personally know of two people that I can name right now. And if I've really thought about it, probably four people that, they literally knocked on the door and were told to go away. Um, a couple of them, I think, she probably had a, a weapon. I, don't know, I, just, I don't, couldn't say exactly what it was, but I, I do know that she told them firmly to go away. It's not for sale. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people tried to buy this car. A lot of people. Um, so I, I can think of two right offhand and probably four um, that had the number. Like phone number. We'll call the lady. Oh, wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So That's really connected. Yep. Yep, yep. You know, it's amazing because, you know, you knowing that backstory and seeing the car since like the 90s. I mean, here we are in 2022. I bought it at the tail end of 2021, right? And, and for three years it sat in a barn. But before that, I mean, the car has 77,000 miles on it. And it was obviously well driven. Yep. When I got the car, I found a couple of things that, that was corroborated by some other locals in the area. And one of them was there was a notepad, uh, a hostess pad from the Western Sizzling in that area. <laughs> and somebody reached out to me on Facebook Messenger and said, I used to see that car at the Western Sizzling near Chatsworth because yep. I guess the lady would go and drive it there and she worked there for a little while or something and it was underneath the back floor mat. Um, you know, it, it was in a small town, so I don't think that it would have had a high mileage. I mean, if you consider that, I mean, it's probably high mileage for a and collector SSC. scene, yeah. yeah. Somebody would buy it and park it and not drive it much. He drove it a lot, almost every day. Wow. Um, that's what I was told. I yeah. didn't know them personally. I just know that I have friends that live in that area. Um, well, Chris, guy I was telling you about, yeah. we were cruising by. He lived one mile from 411. 
uh, on your way to Okoe. So that's yeah. where he grew up. And anytime they went to Georgia, you took 411 because you're right there. <laughs> yeah. So they passed this car probably hundreds of times over the course of 20 years, just driving through. But it was one of those things where it, it the guy, one of the guys that connected on it, um, lives up almost the Kentucky Tennessee border. Yep. Um, and he he had gotten in touch with the lady that owned it uh, after the gentleman passed away. Um, so his widow is the one that he called. Yeah. And she was just like, no, it's not for sale. I think it was a family heirloom is what they were talking about. You know, giving yeah. it to, um, I don't know, his grandson or something. But it was, yeah. So the grandson was the one that ended up getting the car, and he so I got it from him. Um, you know, but still a little bit more about the backstory before we get into that. You know, a lot of people mentioned that the car was driven and they would see it in and around and stuff like that. And another thing I found was probably five or six different receipts, like parking passes for different like NHRA events. Yeah. I mean, so he would drive it to other states, you know, go to Daytona, he would go to Indianapolis and he would drive this car. That's awesome. I mean, so a limited car like this, just driving to the event. It was well loved. Yeah, it was, and it's actually you know for for what it is, um, and how much he drove it. Like this is all original paint. It is all the way down because the the one quick way to tell on the SSCs, um, there's a laser etch line that runs all the way down the fender. There sure is. All the way down. And there. I did not know that. And you can see it if you catch the light just right. This guy. I love that it. that tells you it's an original paint car. Now I. I, I to the argument, some people will buff over areas and it will make it where it's not so pronounced. So you have to obviously paint gauge, but this car, it's very obvious. You can see it, it is. Works. It looks like somebody keyed the car straighter than an arrow. I mean, it's amazing. And it's funny because, you know, I haven't had the car that long, but I haven't even noticed that line. Really? No, I did not notice it. You know, I may have noticed, like, here it is, and then there's a scratch here. And so there's a few scratches right here. And here's what I was told. I don't know if it was you or someone else, but there was a bunch of dogs on the property, and the dogs were always probably jumping up on it, which makes sense because there's all these low scratches right around here, yep. which hopefully a lot of those will buff out. We've got a few rust things, and you've given me some great tips on repairing some of that. But, you know, Bob, if you don't know, please, again, check out his channel, Pierce Motorsports. But he knows so much about these cars and has rebuilt just amazing cars himself. But the details on this car, you know, you've kind of been here for a little while today and kind of looked over it. Now you've gotten up close to it where before you just passed by it on the road. Right. I've, I've never know? been this close to this car, <laughs> like, you know, within probably, you know, 80 or 90 feet from the road. But that's it. We're driving by. It's not like you, we talked about earlier. It really yeah. wasn't a place you could just drop in on. Right. Um, so the, what I have noticed about the, I mean, it still has the original Monroe. Shocks and struts and adjustable suspension. You said it lit up. It did. Which is good. That means yeah, the control right. box works. The mufflers are original to the car. They actually have the super turbo uh, embossed wow. in them. So, you know, it, for it to have as many miles as it has on it, for it to be an original paint all the way around that I could see, it's, it's, it's a gem, you know? And it's, it's one that I know people would want to restore it. And I've even pushed you. <laughs> like, just, just. Just put some love into it. It's Don't why I haven't really it. done no. too much, you know? <laughs> Leave it the way it is. I'm going to continue to think about it because if I think about it a little longer, I feel like I'll kind of, you know, throttle back a little bit, yeah. you know, because we all have tendencies to want to do more. Yep. Uh, and then you get in there and you're like, while I'm there, I don't want that on this car. So I even waited until today for you to come down. You know, I was talking to Brandon and there's another SSC right behind me, a mint fresh, like crisp one that we might show you guys. But this car... It's so hard to decide what to do to it, you know. So, see, can you give me your your take and tips? Like, what should I do to this car? So it's interesting. I have an '89 Celine in the shop, in my shop right now, um, and you can check out a couple of videos that I'm doing on that. And, and we're taking the same approach um, that I would recommend for this car. We're leaving as much original paint as possible. There's some scratches like on the door, but. The key to something like this that makes the big difference to me is if you were to touch up the trim. If you were to repaint the trim or replace rubber pieces on it, it really breathes a lot of life into a Fox. Yeah. Because uh, you see windows that are baked and you see trim that's kind of that, it turns into, you know, almost sandpaper looking. Yeah. If you freshen that up and then just kind of put some love into the paint, I think you'd be surprised at how good it would look. 
No, that's to me is what I would do is if it were mine. Yeah. I would I would try to preserve as much as possible because you hear it at auctions all the time. They're only original ones. That's right. So that's great know, advice. It, and it's it's one that has the perfect amount of patina. There's no major rust. There's you know all the pieces are there that are original to the car. Yeah. And even if you had to replace them, you could pull them off and set them in a box. Yeah. Um, so you could drive it and enjoy it. But it's just yeah. It's an amazing shape. Even the leather. I mean, it's not split. No. It's all complete. Now it is. It's showing its age. But yeah. You know, he really did take good care of the car. Even though I mean, it sat outside every day. It was yeah. not in a garage. There was no Except for the last couple of years, that's right. Yeah, and then it was like covered in dirt and animal tracks like crazy. You know, I think <laughs> my guess is that the, um, she put that back there because of the people stopping. And there was stuff yes. in front of it. There was. I think to, to hide it. Yeah, they, they had an old Fairlane and another newer kind of Shelby and they kept those. And yeah. But they, they just couldn't feel like they could do this car justice. Didn't really know how to go about restoring or preserving a car of this caliber and nature. and. You know all the know-how that the guy that originally owned it would have been able to do, and you know they just couldn't do it. So they were like, "Look, it's time to sell," and they did. So I'm yeah. glad because I got it. Yeah, I mean, you were just so, you know, it's like one of those things where I, it's uh, a, a little luck. I, I, I say it a lot. I even say it on my channel. A little luck. I'll take a luck, luck over skill any day. Yeah. So because I mean, there was a little bit of luck in this. They're absolutely the right, right time. The right. I mean, it's you know all the planets in the right order. <laughs> You know, yeah. I you're not alone. There were so many people pawing at this car trying to get it. There really was. And, and, and while I was trying to buy it, I mean, it was the, the amazing thing. And here's kind of the, the fun part about how I acquired the car is the guy that listed it, he did a Google search, Selena SSC. And you know how on Google you get the images and there's like eight of them in different sizes. Yep. And he did a screenshot and that was the only picture he posted on Facebook Marketplace. Really? That's all he did. And so instantly, I thought, is this a scam? Like, what? Th yeah, you would think that. that. Yeah, for sure. Because you see those all the time. Like, the other day I saw this one, it was a Supra, you know, like the, the, the Mark IV or whatever, like the 93, like awesome Supra that everybody loves. And it was like a low price, and it was just like a stock photo. I'm like, I'm not even clicking on it. That's right. clickbait, I'm done. That's what this looked like. But because I'm such a nut about these cars, I'm like, I've got to click on this thing, right? i got to find out what this is. And so I clicked on it, and I'm like, Okay, there's a real profile kind of looking with a picture, yeah. and it said 45000 asking price. And I'm like, wow, like, okay, well, which one is it? Because there's eight different pictures. They all look brand new. So it listed a few things. It didn't even get the mileage, I don't think. And so I'm like, message, 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 message. And then finally the guy, he, he messaged me back. He's like, hey, I'm at work. Sorry. I uh, got a few other people that, you know, also, you know, already reached out. Yep. Uh, I'm like, look. I'm an hour and a half from you with cash in my hand, sitting in a rollback, waiting to come to your house. He's like, I get off work at 6. I'm like, I'll be there at 6.01. So he's like, let me check with this other guy first. So then I'm like, oh, somebody's beat me to it. So some guy, I think was from Maryland, was talking to him. Yeah. And he couldn't get down there fast enough. He wanted to hold it for him. And he's like, no, I can't hold it. So he calls me back. He's like, hey, when can you be here? I'm like, I told you, 6.01, maybe even 5.59. You know, so I could be there. I could get this car from you. I could tell you're excited, it man. Yeah, I was so excited. And so I was like, look, I had never seen one of these in person except for the one back here. And so I was like, I came over and I'm looking at Brandon's like really awesome, just mint condition. And I'm like, I can't believe I'm going to go and have a chance to buy the this car right now at Barn Rescue State. I wonder what it's going to look like. You know, right. I wonder how real it is because I still was like, he sent me pictures that he had, so I was like, okay, I'm pretty sure it's an actual car. That's he good. He sent me about seven or eight pictures that he'd sent some other people. And then I get up there, and I'm like, look, this is amazing. Like, the car's here. But then I'm like, right. you got to understand, I'm telling the guy, right? There's, there's some salesmen inside of me, right? you got to understand, I think it's why you're selling it. This car is not going to be an easy car to get back going. It's not going to be an easy car to bring back to the state it needs to be. The parts... The, the, the information, all the stuff alone, which is why they didn't do anything with the car, I believe. Yeah. <clears throat> and because, you know, when someone passes, I think that's why it sat for three years. You know, they had to kind of like really let it sit in. Well, I mean, this was the guy's car he really enjoyed. And yeah, he bought it new. Yeah. And it's a, I mean, it's, it's it brand new in 90. I got all the receipts. They probably didn't want to sell it. I mean, it's, it's a, if the truth <clears throat> be told, if I had something like this, well, actually, we do. I have my, my dad has my great grandfather's 67 Bel Air that he bought new. And for the life of us, even my sisters, my dad, 
just can't bring it. You know, something within us yeah. we can't sell it, and That's it's right. it's not. It's yeah. in a state of disrepair, and it's not. It's a four door, so it's not worth putting a bunch of money into it. But there's a lot mm -hmm. of sentimental value, mm -hmm. and I bet that that was part of what was dealing. And I'm pretty sure that when it was sitting out front, I would say that that sentimental value. Um, she probably got irritated with people coming to the door a lot. Yeah. I, that's my guess. I, I would. I would. I went back and I looked through my Facebook comments, and I have over 30 comments from people that said they went by to try to buy this car. I mean, that's a lot, and that's probably just the people that reached out. Yep. I mean, so you figure over the years, <clears throat> there could have been 50 to 100 people that stopped. Yep. I mean, that's every month, multiple people coming well, by. Well, it was parked out front. I mean, it's, I know. it was one of those where, and you could visibly see it. Um, if I tried, drove by, I would have stopped. <laughs> well, I, I've, got, I've got friends, and we've got pictures of, of it, um, and I, I know we do. And I, I was trying to dig through my photos, um, old pole, you know, the... 30 yeah, millimeter. I've got friends that have pictures of it, and I'm, I'm trying to see if we're going to dig through all this stuff. I know that... Got some pictures in a shoebox somewhere. Of this yeah, car. and we're going to... We're going to I, as soon as I find them, I'll give them I'll some love it. to you. But, um, and that's yeah. why this car is the legend of Highway 411, because it's not like it's just an SSC that somebody owned. I mean, it's story alone, the nostalgia for so many Mustang lovers. It was close to the tail of the dragon. I mean, people would drive through from other states to get to it. And it was very well known. Yep. And it was there for so long in the same place you could count on it year after yep. year. You really, really could. Decade after you decade. Know, you know, it's funny you say that because I remember driving by, um, golly, it's been three or four years ago, and it was gone. Like, and it was one of those where every time I drove by, it was just a staple. As soon as you cross from Tennessee into Georgia. Yeah. Oh, boom, it was like two miles. Is. Yeah, it there right it is, right there. And you drove by, and it was one of those where almost, I, I probably did. I don't remember, but I probably did tap the brakes and be like, wait a minute, what? Because it was there every single time. I went back, and I, I want to say that last time I went by, I was actually going to Mathis Mustang Old Place, and I've got pictures of it empty, no cars or anything like that. And that was uh, shortly after uh, Dale had passed away. So it was, anyways, it, it was one of those moments where it's like, oh, where it was happening. I think on the way back, we, re we, we realized that it had been pushed back into the barn, whatever you yeah. call it, A-frame. It was an a, it's, you know, it's a little A-frame. That's right. Barn. It's a barn. It's a dust. It's a dirty dust floor. So, yeah. <laughs> you know. It was. But I can't believe you got it. And congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it. I mean, that's, you know. it's. I, I really think you're the right owner for this. If you're, you're trying to, you know, what am I going to do? What? And you're, you're asking questions. The right questions. Yeah. My, my opinion of, hey. What's the best route to take with this car? I have my own desires, but let's consider what other people would have for input on this because yeah. you want to do it justice. Yeah, it's one of those community cars, really. I mean, I own it, but it's a community of the Saline community. It's also a community of North Georgia That's and the people true. around it. You know, and I want to do it justice, and I want it to be the best that it can be for what this car is. Not that it's just the Saline SSC, but it is that. Legend of Highway 411. It really right? is. I mean, I'm designing a, a shirt that's like <laughs> memorializing. It. Like, it's going to be cool, you know. It's that outside of the house near the dragon, and it's just going to be fun, you know. So, for me, it's been a, a quite the experience. And uh, and everybody has asked, you know, what'd you pay for the car? Everybody wants to know that, Bob. And, uh, who doesn't? You know, exactly. Who doesn't? You know, let's be honest. And, and I, I, I alluded to this in the first video. I had a newer 2015, it was an F-150 I bought at a really, really good price. Right. Um, I had recently lifted it and put some big wheels and tires on it, and I pulled up, and the, and the grandson of the guy that owned it, he loved it. He liked the truck, and so immediately I knew it. I mean, the salesman, he goes, i got to get involved in this because I was into that truck really good. And so I was like, okay, i got to get him to trade on this truck, and immediately, we, we quick little test drive, and he's in. Wow. Like, I mean, he's in. You know, it was, again, it was, luck. Yeah, it was just, it was, he right. was like, I needed a truck. He was driving an older, um, like an O2 F 150 short box, you know, yep. regular cab, power, nothing. So he's looking at this, power everything, you know, XLT four wheel drive lift 135, a method race wheels going, oh, this is, I need a truck and this is nice. Yep. We know how we get those tingly feelings. He looks at this covered in dirt with raccoon tracks on it going, I don't even know where to start. And, you know, he's like, look, you know, I got another family member that, you know, I had promised them a little bit too. So I, got, I sweetened the deal and put a little bit of cash on top. Not a lot. So I'm into this car really good. I'm not going to give an exact number, but really, really good. And so I would I would reckon to say half of probably what somebody had, had 
already thought about offering me for the car since then. So I feel blessed and lucky, like you said, to be able to have gotten the truck, especially the way I did. I love the, the, the whole hunt of the vehicle and getting oh, the deal does? as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's I'm not trying to get it as, as cheap as possible, yeah. but I'm not trying to pay the highest dollar. And a, a, a decent deal is fun, but a great deal is even more fun. And just goes into that, you know, the whole aura of the car. And, and uh, you know, two, I was really ready and looking. I'm always, you know, on places, Marketplace and Auto Tempest and eBay. And I check places regularly looking for these styles of vehicles because they're so rare. Yep. But I will say this is 2021, the end of when I got this car. Yep. And everybody thought that you couldn't have one then. There weren't any more barn finds and nobody's getting any deals. You know, man. The barn finds are there. Yeah. And if you look hard enough and you get in those places where you sell a little up too, but you're ready to go, cash in hand, there's still deals.